I think honestly, the most important thing is to use your voice, especially being in Canada, being able to have those conversations with the people who have grown and they've grown up and born and raised in Ontario. You know, to listen to their stories and see that, you know, it, no matter where you're at, people are still faced with the same oppression, social injustice um, due to their race and uh, cultural background that, that I was faced with uh, growing up in the States. When I was in college, uh, back home with my girlfriend at the time, we were driving to the gym and my girlfriend at the time was white and a police officer saw me getting on the freeway made a U-turn and pulled behind us. And uh, he finally, you know, cuts on his lights and pulls us over. The first thing he did ask, asked my girlfriend at the time is, um, are you safe? Are you okay? Um, are you in harm's way? He's like, are you guys gang members? Are you, like, like, there's a lot of gang activity back here, this and the other. And I'm just sitting there, I'm like, whoa, like, what do you mean I'm gang members right now? Like, I'm, I play at UCLA, I'm on the men's basketball team. His whole demeanor changed and um, how he approached me and talked to me. I really, in my heart, feel like it was because he, there was a white girl in the car with me. You know, he didn't like that. Black Youth Helpline was very close to my heart because of, of growing up. Um, we didn't have an organization um, such as that one. I've always promised myself growing up that when I got into the position um, to be able to give back and affect and impact the next generation uh, coming up after me, that I would do that any way I can. Being able to be in Canada and have a community like Toronto and the whole nation of Canada, a uh, whole country, you know, I wanted to, you know, do my part and play my role because all the love and support that um, Canada has given me since uh, being drafted in 2015.